I am back. This is Xavier D. Johnson, and everything is different. <laughs> Almost everything. Um, so, long story short, I changed my hypervisor. I changed my uh, OS of choice for doing a lot of these demos. And um, yeah, so here we are right now with a brand new, fresh VM. Um, let's try and set this terminal up so that it is a little bit bigger whenever we do log in. Um, so we'll change this to 100. Uh, we'll change this to 40. Um, and then we'll turn the font up right to, uh, let's say we'll go to, um, 20 all right boom now you guys should be able to see what i see if you want to go through and make your stuff look like mine you definitely can so uh what i want to show you today is something called lateral movement and when i say lateral movement i mean moving from one host that is compromised on the edge over to another host over to another host and another host um, what i want to show you today is how a compromised host could be leveraged in scanning your environment so what I'm going to do is what is called a dynamic port fork, uh, where we go SSH, um, tag F, tag capital N, tag, uh, tag capital D, uh, port 9050, because this is the default port for proxy chain, so we don't have to go in and change anything. Um, I happen to have the root user over at this other server, and let me go retrieve the IP address of that. So that's going to be 172.27.185.41. Oh boy, I wasn't typing that. Uh, so let's type inside the prompt. <laughs> so don't you hate when that happens? 41. All right. So now this should ask me, this is my first time. It should ask me for a password, which I will give. And now we have what is a victim that I just set up a dynamic port forward on my local host 9050 to there. So it's a dynamic port forward. I can do any port, right? So right now, what I do know is I have a list of targets in this network and we are going to try and resolve them. Um, one by one. So we're going to go ping C3. I believe that's for count 172.16.69, which is a completely different um, uh, subnet than what this box is even in. And then this is going to be dot one. So this box is actually dual homed into um from one dot 185 also into dot 69 and so we'll try and ping it and we'll get nothing right but if you go uh proxy chains and i'm not even sure that this works actually but we're going to give it a shot um no dice now what i can try and do is proxy chains uh firefox and all of the hosts that have port 80 open, I can try and connect to. So one of the hosts that we have here that has port 80 open is, um, here, let me open up a new tab because that was acting crazy. Um, 172.16.69.85 supposedly has port 80 open and we can get to it so this is good stuff as you can see back here in the prompt these are all of the proxy chains connections being made as you can see it is literally going through my local host on port 9050 over to this host which has a dynamic port for it so i can get to any uh, I, uh, port right so another server that has port 80 open um, this one has port 80, port 22, and port 443. It's going to be 172.16.169.156. Now we're going to try and go there. 
Okay, so it automatically, so port 80 automatically is pushing us over to 443. We're going to go ahead and add this exception and confirm it. And now we should be able to resolve. And uh, this looks like this is Unify stuff, right? So, yeah, this is stuff that never would otherwise be on the Internet unless you had a misconfiguration. But a single compromised host would now allow me to be able to route to some of this stuff. What else do we have? Um, let's see. We have uh, 162. So 172.16.69.162. Um, here we go. Awesome. So we have something called real link. Um, and then the last one we have here is actually um, 164. So what we're going to do is just take the exact same tab, duplicate it, and then just put a four at the end there. This again is uh, redirecting us from 80 to 443. So we'll confirm the self signed cert. And you will find that we have found a Synology disk station right so we can start to try and go through these uh with some default creds um luckily i know that the default creds for real link are admin admin so let's just try that off the bat failed okay um so let's try admin no password boom there you go um so we got one finding immediately on this pen test um that was super easy I guess I'm not sure what's that. Puppy drool. <laughs> um, so yeah, we already got one finding immediately, right? Um, and you can see again all of our traffic being pushed through our proxy here. So what I'll do is I'll open up a new tab and I'll show you um, a really, really interesting thing that I found. Now on proxy chains, if you've ever tried to do a um, an an in map, you know that in map is not only painfully slow, but uh, oftentimes doesn't work because ping doesn't work as you saw before through uh, proxy chains. So you cannot ping, which is sometimes essential to nmaps functions if you don't get the right set of flags together. So what I did was not only did I find those right flags, right, but I also went ahead and put it inside of a repo for you. So github.com slash I N F E N E T. That should get you to my GitHub. Then once you get to my get one of my GitHubs, and once you get to one of my GitHubs, you'll see pen test scripts. And from pen test scripts, you'll find something that's called nmap power. That's where you will find the dynamic port forward. Also, that's where you will find um, uh, one of the more powerful nmaps that I like to run. But what I'm sending you here for is actually this Python script called nmap proxy chains.py. And what this does is it tries to take a list of IPs from IPList.txt and uh, it'll run a, um, a nmap that's inside of proxy chains. And for every IP, it'll actually spin up a different nmap process. So it'll try and actually um, cut down on the amount of time that it takes for you to do a scan. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I wanna just copy it directly out of here, not even worry about doing a git clone, right? Do a touch for nmap dash, um, you know, proxy chains dot py. And then I'll go in and do a, a nano um, because I'm a skid and I just like to do use nano because it's super easy. So don't feel bad for using nano kids. Um, and then what we're going to do is Python um, in map proxy chains pi and boom, it needs a list of IP. So what we'll do is we'll touch something called IP list dot txt. And then um, for all you Vim lovers out there, I'll go in and uh, use Vim now right so uh, i'm going to use i to insert and i have 172.16.69 dot over and over and over again so what i'm going to do is uh well i guess i can't copy it huh cool um so i'm going to just go ahead and make my list 
actually I could probably copy it from right here There we go. So that's what I'll do. I'd rather have too many than too little. Um, all the IP addresses that were identified are as follows dot four dot one four dot whoops oh, I lost insert one four oh didn't lose insert dot one four dot one seven dot five eight dot five nine dot eight five dot one five six and then we have a few more so one five six uh, uh one six two um one six four and that's it actually boom so now what we'll do is we will write that and cat it to make sure that it made it right so now we see that those are the values that belong in IP list then we can run that command as of earlier um, I believe I actually need to pass a tag I to this if I remember properly yep dash I so uh, IP list uh, txt and now it is making a whole lot of connections over a bunch of ports that I have defined inside of this and it is all going through our proxy chains right as you can see I just passed Python to this and it automatically uses proxy chains so proxy chains the functionality for proxy chain has already been hard coded into this and out of this you will get a uh, assortment of files here I will go and show you that are called GN map and with these GN map files um, you'll have your findings any ports that were found um, here I'll show you there open up one this one's empty uh, 164 looks like it had a finding So I'll open up that one, boom. And this is what it'll end up looking like. You can grab through all of these. Um, so yeah, that's what I wanted to show you today. A single compromise on the edge can actually be extremely detrimental. These people can start to use, the attackers can start to use this as a pivot host, as a beachhead of sort, and start to reach into networks that you otherwise shouldn't have access to or wouldn't have access to. And then, since we know that these things are usually kept off the internet, we make the mistake of having default credentials, um, otherwise uh, relaxed stance, and that's when compromise can happen. Would you want people to be going into your backups? You want people to be trying to control your cloud, your cloud keys and your unifies? Huh? That's dangerous, right? Because now all I have to do is fish you for those credentials, and you're probably not even thinking twice about it because it's not on the internet. Or better yet, you can have something that either has default credentials or a known vulnerability, right? Something that we know based on this version number that I could do a pre-auth remote code execution or something along those lines. You need to make sure that you're hardening every single endpoint, right? And making sure that bad guys are not leveraging your existing infrastructure to carry out further attacks into your network. Got it? Cool. This has been Xavier D. Johnson. I uh, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, uh, share this video if you found it to be useful. Um, the links for my GitHub so that you can get my pen test scripts. This is just very, very high level pen test stuff. There's, don't expect this to like turn you lead or anything. I literally made it just for this video. So enjoy and um, follow me on Twitter at infinite, I-N-F-E-N-E-T. 
Uh, follow me on Instagram at Xavier underscore Johnson. And I hope to see you guys soon. Peace.